The SDGs need to be understood as an integrated whole. The gains of realising one can never be fully met without concerted efforts to achieve all. But clearly education is among the most important. Many of the injustices that the SDGs target result from a lack of access to education as well as from a failure to apply the knowledge from which many are excluded. Realising education gains are so important. Worldwide, 262 million children did not attend school in 2017, a situation likely to have worsened in the face of the COVID-19 crisis. In Australia, 60% of young people from low socioeconomic backgrounds do not complete high school. And rural and remote Australians make up 36% of the total population, but account for only 17% of tertiary students. Many face barriers to quality education. Allowing those barriers to endure robs people of the ability to get out of poverty and realise their dreams and it stops them from making the contributions to life on this planet from which we all benefit. Hello, my name is Rawdon Wilkinson. I'm the Pro Vice-Chancellor for Education and the Student Experience at UNSW and Professor of International Political Economy. But I'm also a passionate advocate for global public policy initiatives designed to tackle enduring inequalities and injustices. And I'm a proud champion of the Sustainable Development Goals. The goal of Sustainable Development 4 deals specifically with quality education. It's designed to secure inclusive quality education for everybody. This is more than learning the alphabet or times tables. It is a goal that envisions the lifelong pursuit of learning and the application of understanding in all areas of society. The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the differential experiences of women and men and the role that a lack of appropriate understanding plays. During quarantine, mothers have overwhelmingly taken responsibility for the homeschooling of children, while often working full time and taking on a higher proportion of domestic labour. Women are also more likely to be essential workers or to have lost their jobs. Shocking as it may be to hear, throughout the world, forms of modern slavery endure. These forms of slavery include indentured servitude, child marriage, forced labour and sexual exploitation. It is impossible to understate the potential of education to transform gender relations and make a meaningful impact on each of these forms of modern slavery. Educating boys worldwide about gender justice can pave the way for a future where consent and equity are prioritised and where violence and domination are decoupled from ideas about masculinity. Equally, educating women and girls is a hugely powerful way to address global poverty. It can help guard against gendered exploitation and abuse by giving women and families more option in life, including around career opportunities and family planning. Other challenges abound. Racism exists at every stage of education. From their earliest years, children of colour face stereotyping, bullying and stricter punishments for perceived misbehaviour. This is especially true for children of black and indigenous backgrounds. Students of colour are singled out with demands to provide perspectives in emotionally fraught debates on topics like Black Lives Matter. Education is also a challenging space for teachers of colour who frequently receive biased feedback and racist insults in students' evaluations of their teaching. All these experiences are a blight on the educational experiences of many. Access to quality education is all too often determined by where you live. The underrepresentation of rural Australians in university education is not due to differences in aptitude. People living in regional Australia are just as capable and full of potential as students in metropolitan areas. However, the costs of relocating to a city to study are prohibitive for many. Students living in cities are generally more able to live with family while they study, while students who relocate need to have access to funds for rental bonds, rent payments, food and other living expenses. Equally, students from rural and regional areas are also much more likely to be female, older and caring for dependents, such as children, the elderly and the sick. The lack of opportunities for tertiary education in non-metropolitan areas as well as in low and low middle income countries can have huge ramifications. If nearly 75% of students who leave do not return after their studies, the supply of professionals, particularly those with community connections, will be constrained with inevitable consequences for local populations. 
This in turn has adverse effects on the economic prospects of rural and regional towns and low and low middle income countries alike. These are just some of the reasons why I'm championing SDG4 at UNSW. Education transforms lives for the better. It enables socio-economic mobility, breaking cycles of violence, poverty and indignity. It is critical in reducing inequalities and improving gender equity. And it helps mitigate and adapt to the effects of climate change. I hope you will be champions with me.